Picard brings back the long-held tradition of bringing an Enterprise captain out of retirement when they should just go and die. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just go off somewhere, crawl under a house like a sick dog and die. Or like a gantry that's collapsed. Maybe exactly. That, yeah. You're that's, going to this movie hard straight away. Look. Yes. First of all, uh, probably not a good time to ask, but if you could leave this video a like, that'd be terrific. I guess to be completely transparent about my fandom for Star Trek, I'm very much a casual fan. I mean, I know more than your man on the street, I'd imagine. Because you're going to point at me and go, I know, I more, know than more than you, than you. Obviously. No, I definitely don't. But in my group of friends, yeah, sure. I'm easily the one that they would beat up for knowing too much 100%. about Star Trek. So, you know, I know your crews and your captains and your eras, and I've seen some of the movies and some of the series. Mm -hmm. But wh where are you in, on this? I've seen most of everything. Look, I know enough about the, the Star Trek franchise to know all the even numbered Star Treks are good, yep. and all the odd numbered Star Treks are bad. If you count Galaxy Quest. Is that true? Apparently that fixes the kind oh, of. Oh, I was going to say the, in the reboot it. continuity, yeah. all, the, all the odd Cause ones. Because it was Insurrection, then it was Nemesis, yeah. both of which are not like particularly great. But in between. Right. Galaxy Quest. Fucking Galaxy out. Quest. Right, right. Anyway, look, we're doing seven, so it's a bad one. <laughs> yeah, right. This aims to tie together the original crew with the next generation off the back of The Undiscovered Country, which was a movie that was apparently going to end with Kirk handing over the Enterprise to Picard, but Gene Roddenberry stepped on that because he's like, no, there's like 80 years between these two. It's like, there's no right? way that that's going to work. And he was opposed to teaming them up in any way, shape or form. But then he died? Luckily he died, yes. <laughs> yeah, right. So they were able to, <laughs> to pull this off. Oh, what to, a stroke of luck. To a mixed reception. I think so, yeah. Yeah. But in re-watching this, not bad, I think. It's all right. <laughs> okay, then. this felt to me like just a kind of longish episode. Yeah. Of probably a more of more of the next generation than anything else. I feel like there's less thought into this, though, in terms of plotting and motivations and what is anything in this and, right. and what's happening and why. Yeah, okay, that's And not true. because it's confusing, like, this is a mile a minute, I can't keep right. up with this, uh -huh. but just because I don't understand the plans that are kind of unfolding here. Okay, well, Malcolm McDowell, yeah. he wants to get a space ribbon to a planet and then he's, he's going to end up in a magical fantasy land where everything's cool, sure. right? Which is where, if you recall... Captain Kirk ends up. Yep. Because at the start of this movie, they're launching the Enterprise B, the new Enterprise, and mm -hmm. he's he's not the captain anymore. It's one of the guys from Spin City. <laughs> yes. He's been promoted to captain of the Enterprise, <laughs> and he's a little bit tentative he's about... He's just finding his feet, mate. He's just finding his feet. I did like there's some kind of bit of banter between some of the original cast members. Yeah. So we've got Kirk and, and, Sp and Scotty. You nearly and, said Spock. And Chekhov. Refused to return. Apparently Leonard Nimoy was asked to direct oh. and he said these lines are also so generic that they could give it to anybody. So they did. They just gave <laughs> yeah, them right, to uh -huh. other characters, other Makes returning characters. Sense. Yeah. yeah uh -huh. mm. So anyway, the ribbon shows up. Yep. Kirk, he saves the day, but of course uh, he's, he's blown out of the, 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 the spaceship. Everybody assumes he's dead, but he's not. No. In magical fantasy land. Cut to the future slash the past. Yes. Holodeck situation. They're on a ship. They have a <laughs> that, felt very, that felt very the next generation... Yeah. Just a jaunty making one of your crew members walk the plank. I'm like, this is some D&D &D nerd stuff. This <laughs> really. The other thing about that scene is I went down this rabbit hole of how the holodeck works. Yep. And apparently, according yep. to my research, yes. please yell at me if I'm wrong uh -huh. in the comments, but it's a combination of holograms Correct. and also physical recreations of things like water and substances you can yep. touch and that. Yeah, yeah. And also it's a weird, there's some weird perspective stuff as well. And there's also treadmills in the ground because there's a limited amount of actual space yeah. but can trick your perspective. So if somebody's standing next to you physically, yeah. they can appear to be... Oh, miles away, that. so it's right. like an unlimited. So it appears to be an unlimited amount of space. Yeah, right. But also, there's treadmills in the ground. I bet if I ran fast enough, I could hit a wall. You oh, give you me, reckon? you give me a few minutes in there, I could hit every wall in that room. <laughs> mate. Right. Don't even worry yeah, about you it. You could. They'd really have to call in the <laughs> occupational health and safety inspector. <laughs> a memo would be sent around, be like, "We're removing all the holodecks from all the Starfleet ships," and you'd be like, "I did that. <laughs> <laughs> I ruined everything yeah, for I ruined everyone. That. That's right. I'm the best." So you know what's one thing I do like about this movie? Okay, the Shatner Picard energy together is good. I think they bounce up each other well yeah. I think they missed a trick in throwing him away for like 120 minutes in this movie right and then bringing him back I, I know it's a next generation movie I understand yeah, that yeah, yeah. but if you're gonna give him kind of the last go at this who do you prefer I know it's uh it's a hot topic well, it's widely debated. Don't make me choose. Do you like the cavalier attitude yeah. of Jean-Luc Picard? No, you've tricked. No, that's <laughs> have I, not... Am I doing this no, right? He just, no, he doesn't have Do that. Do you like the button-down British to French nature of Shatner? Yes. Is that what you enjoy? 
I like like the, it's apples and oranges. This I like guys. Picard. What about you? Well, then if we if you're gonna make me pick, then I'm gonna say Kirk. But I think I like Patrick Stewart more than I like William Shatner. So that's pretty widely. That's no, a widely I'll no argue it there. Okay, right. Yeah, uh-huh. absolutely. I will say this of Shatner. Yes, that dude can fucking swing an axe. Like nice. often you see swinging axes in movies, and I'm like, that guy's never split a block of wood in his life. Right. But Shatner, he's probably got a ranch where he's just splitting wood so, all day. Yeah. Mm. Almost certainly, yeah. yeah. You know what one of my favourite moments of this yes. is? What's that? When Jean-Luc Picard, that cavalier captain, oh, yeah. where he figures out that uh, Zoran's force wheel that he's got, yes. and he see, is that little rock hole, uh-huh. and he squeezes his way through like a dog too big for its dog door. Mm-hmm. And then he's just kind of wedged in it at one point, like <laughs> just stuck and, and just waving his arms about. That's commitment to acting. Exactly it is. Or he was really stuck. Oh, also maybe that. So the centerpiece of this movie, I would say, the yes. thing that people will remember is the finale of this, which is a shitty metal gantry, as you mentioned. Well, see, that's the thing. It feels <laughs> this this bit feels the most like an original series episode, yeah. which is just styrofoam rocks and people fist fighting. And it's just old men slowly clambering over rocks uh-huh, yes. the entire time. Also, and I know you mentioned it, I don't get it. Uh-huh. Because Zorin's idea is to shoot a rocket into a space ribbon or a rocket into the sun. Yes, that's the correct one. Yes. That's going to get him into the nexus because yes. of the sun explosion. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Fucking, what, is, what does that even mean? What is any of that? Like, that's his grand plan, a metal gantry and just an exposed rocket. Well, it was going to work, wasn't it? <laughs> Apparently. Well, I mean, he'd obviously, if those, he if figured it, it out, hadn't that, he? If that button-down Kirk and that renegade Picard hadn't put their nosy beaks in, then they, he would have done it, wouldn't he? But yeah, don't really think I thought about it at the time, but it seems like when you're in the Nexus, yeah. everyone seems pretty aware that it's not real in there. <laughs> like immediately? Like immediately. You're like, oh yeah, this isn't. Because I was just in an explosion. Right? Like a big explosion happened. Right? Like I pulled out into space. Yeah. Correction, sir. That's blown out. Now I'm making bread or something. And now I'm hanging out with all my wife and my kids. Yeah. Who I know are dead or maybe <laughs> never even really existed. But I guess this is fine. I guess this is fine. You know what? Read a book. <laughs> <laughs> Don't destroy your son yeah. to get the ribbon at you so you can bloody... Go into a weird fake reality. Yeah, go into the best fake reality of them all. A book. Or a holodeck, which is essentially... Oh, that's even thing. better, to be honest. <laughs> that's actually a really good point that I just made that I didn't realise. It's just a holodeck, isn't Maybe it? Maybe they shouldn't have started the movie with the holodeck bit. You know what it should have been? What's that? Data pushes someone off the ship. They actually fall, break their neck on the holodeck, and then they go, if only there was some kind of space ribbon nexus <laughs> that's right. that would have none of the flaws of an actual holodeck. If only! Yeah, that's right. Although Beverly Crusher was pretty upset that she got so wet. So that's true. You're pushing the wall. It was a real slow-mo fall, wasn't it? Yes. A couple of those in this movie, isn't there, for yeah. some reason. <laughs> Just slow enough so you can see that it's a stunt person. I love it. That's perfect <laughs> filmmaking. Well done, everybody. Anyway, I love that Kirk just dies. He just tumbles off the gantry or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then he's like, oh my. I didn't remember that being his final words. What do you think he should have been? Bury me with my wig. He should have said like a really high number and then be like, that's the number of women I banged. <laughs> Green skin women, blue skin women. Doesn't discriminate. Oh, now I'm dead. I love how also they just he just he doesn't take him back to his ship or anything or give him a like Spock got an amazing funeral. Mm. Everybody knows that. Even my non-nerd friends who beat me up know that that's an amazing <laughs> funeral. Mm. But in this he just shoveled pile of rocks on him. Right? Come on. In many ways it's what he deserved. <laughs> that's not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so do you know though Kirk's death scene was actually reshot mm. after preview audiences reacted badly to the original version and they wanted a more heroic death. How does he die in the original? Well originally he died after being shot in the back. Oh. But these are like apples and oranges, I feel, right? If I could remember what he was doing when he fell off the gantry, it might seem more heroic. He was running across a gantry. Oh, that's right, he was. <laughs> yes, he had the he got the remote. Yeah. Stop the rocket. Did you know, and uh, this kind of blows my mind. This was the first movie to have a website created to promote it. Really? Yeah, that's right. It's still up to this very day. No, it's not. I oh. check. <laughs> it's not like the Space Jam website, which you can still visit. Not a joke. Also, oh, the thing about this movie is the way they kept costs down, and it's kind of evident, is that a lot of it's done on the cheap in terms of recycling uniforms and equipment. And even explosions. You know that Warbird explosion? Yes. That's in like literally every movie from yeah, the 80s. That's true, yeah. It's in this one again. But there's a pretty good Enterprise crash. One of the 17 times that that ship actually yeah, ends up right. crashing. But what I want you to tell the audience about, and mostly just me, oh, this here is we go. for me. All right. Maybe he, he's hoping I know whatever this is. 
Kirk's not really dead, is he, in this universe? Oh, he isn't. That's Please true. explain what the situation okay. is here. Last so, on-screen appearance. Yes. So, canonically, he is not dead in a series of novels written by William Shatner, <laughs> the actor who portrays Captain Kirk in what we call the Shatnerverse. <laughs> yes. So, William Shatner, he wrote one novel set, I think, six months before the events of, of Generations, to, mm. I guess, set up his eventual return, Yeah. in which Spock comes to pay his respects right. to... Kirk's grave and then notices like a transporter transporting the body away and he's like what devilry is this right we wouldn't say devilry no, he's like what technology that exists in this universe is transporter, this transporter I recognise <laughs> it yeah and then if I remember correctly and there's no guarantee that I do sure the Borg bring him back in order to kill, I think, Picard. Like, they want to assassinate Picard because they've had run-ins with Picard before obviously and they're like this will be a covert way to do it really? You think so? That guy you definitely saw die? <laughs> so what, they, he just walks up to him and is like, he's like their version of the Terminator? Yeah. Is that the idea? No, he's not. He's just regular Captain Kirk. And he thinks he's going to kill Picard for them. Right. He's a loose cannon. I or is he? Don't know. <laughs> or a pencil pusher. <laughs> so I got some trivia here. What's this section called again? Hey, it's trivia. Oh, what do we call it? It's trivia. Oh, yeah. Okay. Hey, it's trivia. Hot times, fast trivia. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Thomas Decker, who plays John Connor in the Sarah Connor Chronicles, mm-hmm. plays th- one of the fictional children of Picard. Oh, hello, father. Hello, father. What do you think of this fictional universe? I don't like it. He didn't like it. He didn't like it. It's true. <laughs> I do like that they delve into his family in this, how he's the last in his lineage. Mm. That I enjoyed. I didn't completely hate this. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. It's just quite boring for a lot of this movie. It's, yeah. And I know that's like a hallmark of Star Trek. That's right. I said it. Uh-oh. No, it's not. I don't, because I know Star Trek is supposed to be, there's a methodical nature to it and it's characters and it's solving quandaries. You know what I mean? And, and things sure, like yeah. that. Mm-hmm. And I think this doesn't do the action all that well. So sure, it's just okay. kind of yeah, like, right. it's middle uh-huh. like on both counts. At one point also producers considered approaching Marlon Brando to play Soren. Can you imagine how terribly that would have turned out? I imagine those fist fights. Oh my goodness. Good lord. Because he did the island of Dr. Moreau That's around true. this time yeah. and ruined that movie by all accounts. <laughs> Just a terrible bloke doing pretty mediocre acting at that point in While his life. While sitting in a lawn chair. That's, yeah, that's pretty right, much. exactly. So imagine that gantry <laughs> showdown. Kirk Picard, you'll not stop me. I've got this remote and I'm sitting in this lawn chair. <laughs> Oh, he's died by himself. <laughs> no, no. And the other thing is, uh, William Shatner, he's, he's, a, he's a horse rider from way back. He actually used an old trick of wearing something unusual underneath his costume to keep the pants up. So the Starship captains, both of them, are wearing pantyhose. Oh, the there you go. Pants. So there you oh. go. A little handy hint out there if you're a horseman and you're thinking, do some horse stuff, but how my pants keep falling oh down. They kept falling down with that, like, doing oing <laughs> sound, sound effect. And then my, like, dicky bow bib keeps flipping up <laughs> in my face. So look, um, all in all, I didn't... Whatever. What all do you right. think? It's a send-off. I mean, come on. No, it was not a great send-off. I have a more positive uh, opinion of it now than I think I did back in the day because I think at the time I'm like, oh, my God, they're going to team up both the captains. This is going to be amazing, and it wasn't amazing. And that's the thing. Maybe also because I was let down because it was like a, it was, it was on the big screen yeah, right. and it felt kind of middling. But seeing it on... A TV <laughs> yeah, sure. felt more like an episode of the TV yeah. series. I'm fine with that, you That's know? fair enough. Look, what do you guys think of this movie? Um, you're allowed to like it, I mm. guess. But I am curious, though, if you're a fan of the original series and also Next Generation, mm. H- how is this in terms of that? Yeah. I hate this. Let us know your favourite Star Trek movie. Maybe we'll watch another one. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe we'll watch another odd-numbered one. Do you reckon we should go through the, the Next Generation films? <sighs> Look, we've got a Patreon. We throw polls yeah. up all the time. Yeah, yeah, Maybe yeah. I'll put it up there. Yeah, absolutely. Can, yeah. Do you want to make James watch Star Trek The Motion Picture? Oh, Un- God. A movie that is even more boring <laughs> than this movie that James definitely will hate. Also, of course, here's a hint towards what's coming next week. Very exciting. What do you say? Also, of course, we have a podcast called The Weekly Planet where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. We talk a bit of Picard now and then, a bit of Star Trek, a bit of the news of the week, though, isn't it? That's how we get into it, and then a topic. I'm Mr. Sunday Movies on Twitter. I'm at Wikipedia Brown on Twitter. See you guys on the next Caravan of Garbage. Okay, grab that jam, you guys. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. Email me if you want a pizza roll.